Hello everybody, um, this is Elizabeth ASMR and I know I have been sort of missing in action lately um, nothing's happened, nothing's wrong, I just have been doing other things, you know I do that sometimes um, but I'm going to try to get back into it um, and I'm starting with a story time uh, I think I've been sort of feeling self-conscious about my content and uh, my uh, equipment. It's not as fancy and as good as other creators have and feel like um, other creators have such good ideas to videos. Whereas I find mine to be sort of gen generic, generic. And... Um, and boring, I don't know. I um, I just have a really hard time getting into the whole role-playing aspect of the ASMR again. I um, feel more comfortable just being myself and telling stories and doing show and tells. I used to do role-plays in the beginning um, where I started my channel. And I, I liked it back then, it was fine, but I feel extremely awkward now. I just can't get back into it. I have tried and I, I literally get goosebumps all over my body. Um, I don't watch the old role playing uh, videos because I get like this urge to delete them, but um, I know people uh, still come to them for ASMR purposes. so. I've kept them. So these are just my thoughts on why I have been lacking uh, in posting videos. I am just trying to accept that I am a bit old fashioned with my little camera and um, my content and hopefully maybe someday I'll get back into role plays. Um, I think it's also because I don't watch uh, role playing ASMR anymore. I find it sort of uh, fake and I, I can't get into it. I like it more real and, and um, personal I guess. But um, to this video I am going to do another story time and it's going to be, um, I've probably entered the title now, but my encounter with the supernatural. I currently only remember two incidents um, one when I was very little and one when I was adult. And I'm going to start with the first one, um, which I am unable to explain, like logically. I know I have mentioned before that I identify as um, atheist. I don't believe that there is more out there, but maybe a bit agnostic. I mean, I can't like firmly deny anything because I know nothing. Um, so I'm going to start with this first story which I haven't been able to explain logically like with certainty. As many of you know I am from Iceland um, which this accent comes from um, and I remember there has been like a poll that uh, said that I can't remember the exact percentage, but it was a large amount of Icelanders believed in elves. And I'm not saying I believe in elves, but I have had um, like elf encounters, like not met an actual elf. And I'm going to explain this a bit. Um, it just sounds so silly trying to explain it. But when I was little, I think I had been about six years old. I, I believe I had started like school, like a first grade. And in Iceland there are a lot of areas with lava stones. I believe foreigners like um, describe being in Iceland as it sort of being like on the moon because there are so few trees and there is just a lot of lava stones. And by my house and by my school um, there were a lot of lava stones. And I remember one time when I was outside playing, where there was like a small area of lava stones, 
there was um, like a stone that had been cut in half um, in Iceland you be we believe or in Iceland there is a story that some stones are elf stones and uh, there are even laws that you can't remove some elf stones um, um, yeah but I remember there being like a very very large lava stone and it was sort of cut um, cut in the middle and we used to play around these lava stones a lot but then one time I remember I looked inside of the sort of cut in the stone and I I swear I saw small um, tables and chairs um, and like a bed inside this cot and I at like six I very logically just thought oh elves live here you know and uh, I don't know I don't remember if I showed anyone or if I if I talked to any adults about it this is just literally the only thing I remember looking inside the rock and seeing the chairs and the tables and the bed and just thinking automatically this is an elf stone and it being very like sure it's an elf stone you know um and i haven't been able to explain it because i remember it so vividly and i know that it was not a dream because i remember that stone and i remember everything and i've seen this stone like time and time again but I don't remember if I've ever looked in sight of it again but I remember that one time and I don't know if the adults had put the stone uh, the chairs or the tables and the bed inside just to sort of um, give the kids something fun like Santa Claus and everything you know um, but the chairs and the tables and the bed was made out of lava stone so it was like the elf elf had, elves had made it from stone you know and uh, I, I don't know what it was like I said I haven't been able to get like a logical explanation on this this is just what I remember and um, I don't know if I believe in elves <laughs> I, um, I don't think so but I've definitely had an encounter with an elf home and um, being so young I don't know if it was a setup and I was um, being lied to or like the adults had, had done this to um, have some excitement for the kids I don't know so that is my first supernatural experience and the one I, I haven't been able to explain and the second one is when I was about 19, I would like to say, yeah, 19. I had, re I had uh, moved to Denmark when I was 18 and I had got gotten like an apartment, but it was like a dorm, but apartments. So everything was like, um, very, you were, you lived like door to door from each other. So I was living alone but I was I felt very safe because there were people like on either side of me and I um I, I became friends with my now husband and we had a lot of friends like in this dorm apartment um so the feeling of sort of being alone it it wasn't there I guess I felt very very safe and I lived there for about a year and then I moved with a friend to a very old apartment near downtown. It was very woody, woody and very loud and crackly, you know, um, very ghost house is, but it was cheap and it had two bedrooms and um, we wanted to get out of this dorm apartment because there were two living there and it was just too small. It was basically just a room and a bathroom and um, we got this apartment and things started to feel weird. Um, the faucet would sometimes just 
go off on its own and uh, start running and uh, we didn't think much about it but it we also heard a lot of steps along uh, the apartment floor and um, these things had happened like a few times and I was getting pretty spooked I was 19 at that point I didn't have a lot of opinions on supernatural things or my beliefs I didn't know I was still in sort of the process of identifying who I was and what my beliefs were so I, uh, I got scared quite easily I think when I look back but I can't really say that because when you're in a certain situation you act differently and then um, one time I, uh, we were going to sleep and uh, we were sort of scared so we, we slept in the same bedroom even though we had sort of um, divided them like this is mine and this is yours and uh, my friend was sleeping on a mattress by my bed and I remember hearing steps coming into the bed bedroom and uh, someone sitting um, on the foot of my bed I felt like the weight of it and I remember I sort of saw my friend sitting there so I I knew instantly that it wasn't her and I remember not being able to move um, I'm barely able to open my eyes I couldn't speak I couldn't scream I couldn't do anything and then I sort of opened my eyes and I saw like a like a big figure um, standing over my bed like it looked like a very tall man but like a shadow figure and I got so scared that I like woke up like really woke up and I was able to move and I made my friend like come up to bed with me to sleep because I was just terrified and uh, for a while I was like very uncomfortable in the apartment I I was so spooked and so scared because of of the experiment experiment um the experience but then as time went on I um our uh, land, landlord landlord the guy who rented us this apartment he came and uh, we mentioned the faucet thing and he did some fixing and tightening of some screws I guess and the faucet stopped running all the time so it was broken and um, with the time we also realized that because it was such an old building and everything was made of wood basically wood and bricks when our next door neighbor would walk along their floor our floor would shake and it would feel like it was in our apartment so that got explained and then um, the experiment why do I keep saying experiment it's like um, I should get into the lab I probably have something I want to experiment with I don't have a lab um, it was a good joke and yes the experience of not being able to wake up and move my body kept happening and uh, sometimes I would experience spooky things like shadow figures or the feeling of someone sitting on top of me and I uh, started googling this and I realized that I had sleep paral paralysis sleep Par par paralysis yeah I think that's it and I also mentioned this for my doctor at the time and he agreed that that was probably what it was and um, and if you don't know what that is that is basically where you when we um, fall asleep our body creates like a muscle relaxer so that we don't like move around too much when we are sleeping like if you were dreaming something um, your body would want to move with it but the muscle relaxer makes you not move and um, with sleep para paralysis um, your body wakes up before the muscle relaxer is out of your body so you are conscious but you cannot um, move your body and you are sort of in the state of being awake and dreaming 
that is why people often experience shadow figures or something unnatural happening around them because they're also sort of dreaming and that kept happening to me uh, quite often and uh, to the point where I, I hated going to bed you know and um, this also happened to me quite a lot right after I had my daughter and um, that is can be explained by um, when you don't when you are lacking in sleep like back when I was um, 19 and 20 I was going out a lot and uh, I didn't sleep for more, more, more than perhaps four or five hours sometimes and uh, I had a job I had to get up for so and I was like very bad at getting early to bed so I was really ignoring my need for sleep which makes sleep paral paralysis um, much worse and when I just got my daughter I was being waking up like every other hour every hour sometimes um, because he was little and had to constantly be taken care of and I remember it being awful because it usually happened when I had to take a nap during the day um, my husband was home for 14 days after our daughter uh, was born and I was on maternity leave for about 8 months but it was me that sort of got up during the night so when he came home uh, during the afternoon it was like my um, I would make sure she was like she had been breastfed and I was going to take a nap and he would take care of her but that was always where I got the sleep paralysis but I couldn't like not take the nap because I needed it and I remember like screaming inside and like seeing my husband walk past me with my daughter and just wanted him to shake me awake you know um, so yeah that was logically explained it doesn't happen to me that often today because I have gotten older and I um, don't go out as much like as in never <laughs> and um, I also work changing shifts I work evenings nights and day so not taking care of or making time for a good night's sleep or sleep during the day um, it just doesn't work you won't be able to function as a human being so sleep is very important to me I um, try to get eight hours every day um, if I'm working night shifts I uh, settle for at least five um, so it doesn't happen because I, I think it's because I'm so well rested now so everything that happened in that apartment was logically explained which I am which the skeptic in me is very happy about um, I have met people that have said that have very convincing stories of something supernatural happening and I, uh, I don't doubt that that's what they experienced and I perhaps many of them are true but I also think that perhaps many of them could be explained like logically I think so I read some somewhere sometime that um, the human eye always sort of search for like human figures in everything so we are very quick to like if um, a flower bed looks like a person we are very quick to identify that it looks like a person you know so in the dark or, or some wooded area or wherever you are I think we are very quick to sort of search for the human form which I think sometimes tricks us and I also think that when we get scared it sort of escalates for us because then we are on high alert and um, sort of searching for something that might be dangerous or harm us those are just my thoughts I'm, I'm pretty sure maybe some of it is true I don't know um, but I don't mess with it I think the more you mess with it the more you think about it um, the more it will find you uh, either the actual supernatural thing or that your body and your mind is so fixated on it that you will find every little sign and um, make it something supernatural even though it isn't so yeah um, I just think 
I like watching ghost story videos, so I thought I would make mine or a supernatural video because you know elves. Um, yeah. I think this is it. I um I really try to think about any other experiences I've had and there is nothing. <laughs> um perhaps I've forgotten them, perhaps I was drunk, you know, you never know. But um I uh, hope to start filming more regularly again and I hope you all are very well and I want to thank all of you that have taken the time to write messages to me which I never reply because I just don't and it's not because I don't want to and it's not because I don't appreciate it but sometimes when you are overwhelmed in life and sometimes the smallest tasks um, just seem so difficult to get through I um, I recently got a new job and uh, it's been tough uh, getting into it I love it but being new in a workplace I know many of you know this it just takes a lot out of you and um, I'm finally getting to a place where I am comfortable and um, I know pretty much what I'm doing at, at work so um, yeah and yeah I will see you guys again soon.